She's a second generation vet, a dog wrangler, and a cowgirl. One minute, you've got an emergency C-section on a chihuahua, and the next minute, I'm out semen testing bulls that weigh 2,000 pounds or more. Not my favorite job. Meet Dr. Carey, a prairie vet on wheels. I literally have my phone with me 24 hours a day, every single day of my life. <laughs> Oh no, here come the dogs. It's another dog day morning at Manitoba's first mobile vet clinic in the small town of Asher, Manitoba. You can't plan for an emergency. Dr. Carey is always on call. Kelly got attacked by a dog there's some neighbors that were out with their dog nearby and uh, the other dog came into her yard and attacked her. Dog fights can be serious. The dog's teeth and jaws are very powerful. Small puncture wounds from canine teeth can close over rapidly and can easily be missed. She's always been good with my dog, so I would imagine the other dog probably initiated things. As a golden retriever collie mix, Callie is gentle, calm and affectionate. These two wonderful breeds create one of the best family dogs possible. She's always there for us. She takes my son to the school bus in the morning and uh, she protects the yard. She barks when somebody comes in to let us know, but she doesn't bite. Abandoned as a puppy, Shane's family adopted Callie for her sweet nature. I love her really much. She's part of the family and she's the best dog in the world I could ever have. With dog bite wound under the skin, you can have a whole bunch of trauma going on that you can't really even tell from the surface. So we want to just get in here and just kind of explore this, make sure that there's, there's no puncture wound. This ear is really swollen, puffy in here, so it's full of probably pus and blood. So we'll get that cleaned up here. This infected wound on her ear is really smelly. Different bacteria, ugh. different bacteria have kind of different smells. A dog's mouth is full of germs. Any bite that punctures the skin can introduce serious infectious organisms. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's really painful for her, so we're gonna give her some sedation first before we do anything else with this. We're gonna have to make you sleepy for this cow, or is it? Yeah, we don't wanna cause her any unnecessary pain, so we're gonna give her something to make her sleepy now. Oh, gross. So we're just gonna get it drained out good, cleaned up, flushed out, and and then on to antibiotics. I don't know why there's that little pinhole there. Unless, I guess, maybe the tooth just came all the way through and... and... We don't stitch these clothes afterwards. We leave them open because this is an infected wound. If we stitch this closed, it will just trap that infection inside. Using a syringe, Dr. Carey thoroughly flushes out the abscess. You're just gonna have to watch in this location. It's a lot of cartilage, so it can be tough for antibiotics to get in there and to penetrate properly. Dog bites that appear to be minor on the surface can be deceptive and even life-threatening. We're worried. She's our family dog. We love her and we just want the best for her. You ready to wake up? We don't want her to suffer. Callie is placed under observation until she's safely recovered. No, you're, you're sore. No. She's a precious dog and I love her so much. And, I, and if she, she passed away, I'd be very sad. Okay. 
Dr. Carey is up with the sun. Prepping her mobile clinic for the long day ahead. This morning, we are off bright and early to the Assiniboine Kennel Club's dog show just south of Winnipeg. As the crow flies, Winnipeg is two hours due south of Asher. We've started doing a lot of work for the dog shows throughout Manitoba. Dr. Carey's clinic brings an essential service to the dog show, providing affordable x-rays, shots, ultrasounds, and checkups. Her service is priceless, with an insider's knowledge of how good breeding and healthy dogs are what's needed in the show ring. Seven groups of dogs are defined by the Canadian Kennel Club. Sporting, non-sporting, herding, working, hounds, terriers, and toys. Today, they will not only be shown, but tested on obedience as well. My name is Diane Fast. I'm the show secretary for Assiniboine Kennel Club. Right now, we're having an, an all-breed show. In the dog show itself, we have dogs from across Canada, down in the States, all come to our little town on the prairies for a dog show. The judges at dog shows set out to pick the dogs that best meet the standards set out by the Canadian Kennel Club. A dog that does well in the show ring and has passed its health test is a strong candidate for breeding. Good news for its owner. I think Dr. Carey promotes the fact that good breeding and good healthy dogs is what we need in the show ring and what everybody should strive for. There's a lot of people who come to the dog show with uh, an entire litter or litter mates that have the opportunity to get tested for hips, for heart, for eyes, getting their re regular vaccinations, which are incredibly important, all part and parcel of breeding good dogs. Dr. Carey is incredible because not only does she come to us here at the shows, she puts the animals first. It doesn't matter if it's a $10,000 show dog or a piglet or, you know, a, a, a newborn baby calf, she cares. She offers such an amazing community service to us as show people by not charging us what you would pay at a regular vet clinic. She's tailored those services to us. This dog show is an important show for dog breeders. There's uh, handlers from all over Canada and the US that are here today. Tango, would you like to say hi? You have to wake up and say hi. He's having his spa treatment right now. All sorts of breeds make it out to these shows. From fluffy and puffy, to stout and elegant, to downright adorable. All the top dogs line up to compete. This all-breed dog show is the third largest in Manitoba and prides itself on the specially qualified judges making this a breeder's showcase. For us, what we do at these dog shows is a bunch of different work for breeders. Um, we try to make it cost effective for them. Dr. Carey's Hospital on Wheels is a game changer, bringing her specialized vet services directly to her clients, saving them time and money. My name is Emily Lenahan and I'm here to show um, two German Shepherds that I bred. Dr. Carey is amazing. She is a breeder herself and shows her own dogs. They're herding dogs, so I really feel confident in bringing my herding dogs to her. For someone like myself who keeps more than your average amount of animals, her breeder pricing is uh, helpful. This is Primrose. This is Buzz. Sophie. This is Suki. Savannah. I just think it's important for us to support them best that we can. We can't do all the testing. We're not specialists, but the stuff that we can do, we, we try to make it affordable for them. Before breeding, owners get Dr. Carey to test for undesirable traits in their dogs, such as bad hips and elbows. After all, they wouldn't want to pass down these problems to their puppies. She needs to lose some teeth. This is how their breed stays strong. 
reduces the risks. It's easier on the animals. It gives you that opportunity. A lot of vets don't offer. She looks at each case individually, and that's just really important to me. I try really hard to encourage them to do what's best for their pet, but financially, that's not always possible for some people. Breeders, they want to do everything they can for their animals to ensure that when they're breeding their dogs that they're genetically sound. Every breed has certain things that they're more prone to. So these breeders, they are spending a lot of money. People think that breeders make money and they don't. They're doing it for their love of the breed. They're not doing it to make money. Maddie, AKA the Joker. Can you see her face? Does she not look like the Joker? My name is Margaret Huguet, and I've been seeing Carrie for about five years now. They call him black and dress. She's a black and tan. Black tan. She's always letting us know when she comes into the city for dog shows, and she's always looked after my dogs. I know she's really concerned with the dog first. <clears throat> Do you want the light back on with that? Whatever my dogs need, that's what they get, because I love animals. They're always there for you. They're always loving to you. It doesn't matter how bad a day you have, they're still there to lick your face and give you kisses. So I love all dogs, all animals, but I love Carrie as a vet. For Dr. Carrie, it's all part of her commitment to making sure that her dogs and her clients get the best care she can provide. How caring you must be to do stuff like that, to take your own time and and care for animals like that. Most people would never even think of doing that. I think most of the vets in the city are all good, but it's more money with those vets. It's all the bottom dollar. The people that are making money off selling dogs are the backyard breeders. As veterinarians, that's what we end up seeing is, you know, dogs with allergies, dogs with hip dysplasia, dogs with elbow dysplasia, lots of issues, and that's because they're not true breeders. They're not responsible, and they're just breeding to make money. Responsible breeders are great. Um, they have a pile of knowledge about their particular breed, so you can learn from them, um, <laughs> as well as knowing that you're helping ensure that that dog that they have is the best that it can be is, is really satisfying. I feel it's important for us to support them. So we're doing things like x-rays, so looking at hips and elbows, make sure that they're breeding dogs that are fit, because most of these dogs are going to pet homes. Everybody wants to buy a healthy dog that's going to have years and years of life with them, that they can go run with it, take it to the park, play with the kids, and not have issues like arthritis come up for that dog. What the show is all about for me, it's connecting with your animal. Pets are becoming more and more than just a small companion. They're part of our daily life. The human-animal connection, when we look at each other, I don't have to give them a command or anything. It's almost like having a four-legged shadow. That connection is unbreakable. It's the heart of the dog show, and time to check in with her clients. They get to not only go in group group, but puppy group too, hey? So. Yeah. Sweet. It's a big day for whoever wins the breeds. It's a really long day. Before the show ends, Dr. Carey arranges to see her favorite Malamute breeder in the province. In total, eight canine checkups are on the books, and one dog faces serious surgery. With her work done at the dog show, Dr. Carey is back on the road again, one hour north of Winnipeg. Malamutes are one of the purest breeds on the planet and have the longest ties to man. It is thought that these powerful sled dogs have been on the planet for around 20,000 years. These clever canines are still going strong. This afternoon we're at Gaylene Robertson's. She's a Malamute breeder. Um, so this is Camp Winterchill. It's a really nice location in Balmoral, Manitoba. Hey you, how's it going? Welcome. 
<laughs> Today we've got a couple dogs that are needing a little bit of surgery. One dog that's got a tumor on its eyelid. So we're gonna do a little wedge resection on that today. I have owned Malmeets for about 34 years. Um, the day I first saw my very first Malmute is when I said, I am going to have one of those. Well, some people have children and I have dogs. Sloan here. here. They're part of your family. You raise them and train them, um, but we love to show them as well. Every summer, Jenna, a student of veterinary medicine, joins the team as an intern. My name is Jenna, and I am Dr. Carrie's mini-me. I get to be her shadow, following her wherever she goes and learning everything that she does. This is my fifth summer with her now, and I absolutely love it. She has let me do more than what I thought that I would be allowed to do. Each summer, I kind of get to learn a new skill, and one of my favorite things about working with Carrie is that she really challenges me to learn more. McGraw is one yep. big male Malamute. I had number one, and then he Dr. Carrie's trusty team speed. prep McGraw for surgery. For show dogs, we don't clip their legs um, because they could be in the ring at any point in time, so it takes a long time for that hair to grow back. Plus, with Malamutes, they don't, if they're clipped, they tend to bother it start chewing at it, um, cause a hot spot, which then can become a big issue for them. So we just don't want to do anything to, to irritate them and cause Gaylene to have any more work than she already does. So, so it's just, well, after Thursday, you won't even Laura and Jenna take special care, placing the breathing tube down McGraw's throat. Dentistry procedures. This one. Okay, so, back in. I got the front. It's imperative that he's kept hydrated during the procedure with an IV. Dr. Carey makes certain that McGraw is out like a light before she begins his dental surgery. Really important with these um, fractured teeth to get them removed. Uh, when the root is exposed like this one is, um, then it just allows bacteria to track down into that tooth and sets up a, a tooth root infection, which is really painful for them. Dental health is vital for all dogs. Poor oral care can lead to serious health problems. broken area that we could see and they do have, even though they're incisors, they have a super long root on them. So it takes a bit to get them out and you wanna make sure that that doesn't get fractured and a root tip doesn't get caught in there to get that ligament paired away from the bone basically and then it comes out. We're removing this mass with this growth on his eyes. With well. the infected tooth extracted, next up is to remove a dangerous tumor. When they have uh, masses like this on the eye just can rub on the eye and cause a ulcer, so a scratch on the eye. And if not treated, tumors like this can lead to blindness. The other Malamutes at Camp Winterchill are missing their pal McGraw, who's facing surgery. We always put betadine on wounds, but you can't put straight betadine in the eye. Dr. Carey prepares for the delicate procedure of removing the tumor. So just dilute betadine instead. And now it's time to carry on with the operation. McGraw feels no pain as the growth is removed. He had quite a large tumor on his eye. It looks small on the outside, but once we turn the eyelid, and looked on the inside of the eyelid, it was quite big, probably half a centimeter um, in uh, diameter. So it was quite a large wedge out of his eyelid. We just do two layers of stitches. We do one in the sub Q layer and then one on the outside. Great care is taken with the finicky stitches to ensure they don't scratch the eye and cause a painful ulcer.
With the surgery and the stitches safely in hand, Dr. Carey cleans up McGraw. Medication will keep inflammation and pain down to an absolute minimum. He's all set. We're just going to wake him up here right away, and then he will get to spend some time in the house. It's very important to have your veterinarian check your dogs, make sure their hearts are working properly, their lungs sound clear, because they're the professionals. While McGraw is recovering, it's time to give the other eight Malamutes their shots. No stranger danger here, right, Kayleen? <laughs> and who likes to get a needle? Sloan knows it's coming and proves more wily than vet tech Laura bargains for. Just because the dog looks normal doesn't mean that they are, so you definitely want to make sure that you're doing your yearly checkups. McGraw is awake within 10 minutes after his sedation was reversed, and out the door within 30 minutes. It's hard to believe there was ever a tumor there. Dr. Carey's been our vet for a number of years now. Yeah, she's my pal. <laughs> Gotta love Dr. Carey. You can always know that if you send her a message, she's just gonna get back to you right away. That's who she is. Almost all of veterinary medicine, it's learning as you go along, adapting techniques. Every day you learn something new and try to adapt, and every time you do something to do it better. It's been a busy day, and it's not over yet. You ready to wake up? Now it's back to Ashern to assess Callie before letting her go home. The body heals really quickly, so in a few days these wounds will all be healed over once there's no, no more infection. They'll come pick her up and she'll head home and hopefully there won't be any, any follow-up that we need to do, but we're here for them if they, if they need to bring her back. The ear is going to drain. It's what we want. You're not away, Shane. <laughs> That's the unfortunate thing with dog bite wounds. So what you can do is you can hot pack that. So just a warm cloth and hold it against it. Okay. 10 minutes, twice a day, if she'll let you. Okay, you can go. I was a little worried about how her health was. Dr. Carey's a really good vet and she takes care of animals really good and she treats them like they're her own pets. Dr. Carey inspired me so much that I want to be a vet. It's now truly a dog day afternoon with Carrie and her canines. These are my three dogs. So Pep is the oldest. She's a black tri. Um, they are all Australian shepherds. Pep's full brother is Siri's dad. So Pep would be Siri's aunt. And then Siri is Tubith's mother. Oh my gosh, you guys are bad. Intelligent, hardworking, and versatile, the Aussie is a fun-loving dog who thrives when their brains and energy are put to good use. With Calvin away 24-7 at the farm, Dr. Carey's downtime is with her dogs. And of course, her horse, Elvis. I totally 
getting a booter. <laughs> and what's this? Even the fish want to play today. Oh, that's awesome. Come on, Elvis. Let's call it a day.